Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And this is going to be Broadway at night. And I figured you guys would enjoy walking around CLG4, USS Little Rock with me, uh, by flashlight. Alright, so I have the camera attached to a flashlight that, as you can see, is pretty bright. <laughs> but, uh, so I'll be holding onto the flashlight and talking behind the camera. Uh, and I might point out some artifacts, alright, but it'd be cool to, at night. Anyway, I'm standing in Admiral's Passageway. Alright, this is, this leads right out to the main deck. And here we have our superintendent of ships, John Branning. All right, he's a 22-year Navy vet senior chief. Uh, he's been superintendent for about eight years here, and he's worked here for a total of about 16 years. That's his office, and my office is right here. All right, so my office was the chief of staff's office for the Admiral. And John's office was the commanding officer's in-port stateroom. All right, so the captain of a ship had an at-sea cabin and an in-port cabin. So this was his in-port cabin. One of the cool things that we like to talk about is all of the dignitaries that were on board. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. One of the dignitaries that were on board uh, we've had Kirk Douglas on board the USS Little Rock, we had uh, Harry Truman, Bobby Kennedy, and one of my favorites, we have Grace Kelly. So here's Prince Rainier, here's Grace Kelly, and here's Admiral Martin and his lovely wife. So lovely that he actually had her in a, with a portrait as well in his office. And this is the Admiral's Quarters. So, USS Little Rock was a flagship, and anything above a Vice Admiral would come aboard and visit the fleet. And this is where he would sit, he, where he would stay when he was controlling the fleet. So right now the Admiral's Quarters is actually being used as a staging area. I'm working with an intern here on board to redo one of our exhibits. So don't mind these styrofoam mannequin faces. Right, maybe we'll see something a little scarier as we move along. But as I mentioned, we're going to do Broadway at night. And I'm going to be highlighting some artifacts uh, for you by flashlight. And uh, hope you enjoy. So now we're going to head forward. And this was the passageway that led out to the bow. Uh, there were other offices here on the other side of this doorway relating to the flag staff. And then out to the bow where the OOD's office was. All right, the officer of the deck. And when they were on liberty, the officers would check in and out at that, uh, at that compartment right on the main deck. So the USS Little Rock had, after her conversion in 1960, the original armament was a 6-inch turret and a 5-inch turret. All right, so this was the handling room for the 5-inch gun. Now this was a dual turret, right? So they had two turrets. Our USS the Sullivans had the single 5-inch 38, was a dual purpose, just like these were, but this was a double mount. 
right? So as I've, if you've watched other videos, you'll see me talk at length about the 5-inch 38 on the Fletcher class destroyers. Well, here's the handling room for uh, the 5-inch 38 on USS Little Rock. All right, there's the shell right there, 55 pounds. And there's a 25 pound canister. And here's the hoist that would bring up the gunpowder. And there's the handling assembly, which someone would stand in and hoist up the uh, gunpowder and projectiles. We have a lot of vents going, so I hope you can still hear me. So now we're heading down to the second deck. And really on board, this is the heart of officer's country. Okay, when we head aft, uh, we'll see some of the birthing spaces and things for the enlisted crew. But really, we're really in the heart of officer's country. There's a bunch of staterooms here. All right, so this stateroom, I don't believe it's open. I don't have my keys with me. But that's like a 12-man stateroom. Or maybe one, two, three, four, six. Six-man stateroom. Here's another stateroom here. You might not be able to see that. Here's a semi fit. Here's a finished stateroom. Got the two bunks, two desks, two bureaus. And this was the officer's barber shop. What's really cool here is that a lot of the barbers had signed it before decommissioning in 76. So a lot of the barbers signed their names and you can see that here. 1969, 1975, 1976. All right, so as a curator, as an archivist at heart, uh, that sort of, that's obviously primary source material, as much as you can get in terms of primary source material. All right, writing right onto the ship herself, or certainly various panels, and that really gets me excited as an archivist and as a curator, because you want to talk about primary source material, there you go. Now here's an example of an unfinished stateroom. And we leave it like this because we allow uh, visitors to walk in here. So we don't want to have any artifacts, uh, anything hanging around. But people can come in here and check out the bunks. All right, check out the sinks and the bureaus and the dressers. All right, here's our trophy case for the USS Little Rock. All right, a lot of bowling trophies out today. All right, so the USS Little Rock were the Tigers. Here's a signed uh, portrait to 
the groovy Tigers of the Rock. So they had football and basketball. Bowling, obviously. Here's some more staterooms. And now we're heading through the passage into the officer's mess. So this is where the officers would eat. Right, a little later we'll see where, and if you've watched our other videos, you have seen where the enlisted crew has, have eat, were eaten or where they ate when they were on board. But here's where the officers ate. They ate on China. They had their own uh, galley. Right back there. And they ate on China. They certainly would eat a little different food than the enlisted crew. Hope that mannequin doesn't turn around. And in addition, the CPOs, the chief petty officers, E6 and above, they would also have their own mess. And they would have, uh, they had their own galley and scullery. In addition, the officers had their own lounge. When she was active, she would not have had this wall here with the plexiglass. All right, but obviously we wanted to construct something that would preserve the artifacts that were in here. And again, without being stolen. So a lot of the artifacts in here are original. Hello, Bill. Come on down. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Oh. Well, everyone, this is <laughs> this is Bill Pearson. <laughs> it's all good. He's staying on board this evening. I don't want to get the light in your face because it's so bright. There we go. Bill Pearson, say hello. Hi. All right. <laughs> do you want to say a little? You spent time on board the Little Rock, did you not? Do I do? Okay. Uh, probably ten to twelve weeks a year. Okay. And just uh, try and keep the old girl together. All right. When did you serve aboard the USS Little Rock? 1959 and 60, I was assigned to the crew. Oh, you're a plank owner. Yep. Very good. I was wondering why that hatch back here was open. Yeah. This is Bill's space right here. All right, and as he said, he spends about 12, uh, 10 to 12 weeks a year on board, and he does, he does a lot of work for the Buffalo Naval Park. And for himself, he's fixing up a really nice tool room now, and he's happy because he's got some water down there now, don't you? Yes. All yeah. right, very good. Well, thank you, Bill. Okay. I hope people didn't, you didn't think that uh, this was a ghost, anyone, because he's a real live guy, Bill Pearson. He was also second class diver, was it, sir? Yes. All right, second class diver as well. I don't, I don't want to get the flashlight in his face, but Bill, we're going to carry on, okay. and you have a good evening. Thank you, you too. I'm All right. more better. All right, sleep well. Yeah, you too. Now, everyone, if we see anyone else besides Bill Pearson, then we know we might be in a little trouble. All right, so we're heading down Broadway. Now this is the main area in USS Little Rock. There's a lot of exhibits here. Like right here, we have a Destroyer Escort Association attached to the city of Buffalo, New York. The DESA, 
is what it's called, D-E-S-A. They have their own little exhibit uh, honoring destroyer escorts. Now, if you saw our video with the USS Slater, or right, a comparison video of the pilot house and uh, navigation bridge wings, right there, a destroyer escort. Here is the chaplain's office. All right, so we just recently had this painted, which I'm thrilled with. All right, and some of the um, instruments of administering the sacrament and preaching to the flock. Bill's shutting his hatch and it's making a lot of noise. Now we're heading again aft on Broadway. This is a new space here. Our Diver Dan compartment. And the gentleman, Bill Pearson, we were just talking to, this was his foul weather jacket right here when he served aboard, let's see what it is, the USS Salvager RSD-3, ARSD-3. All right, so it was a salvage auxiliary. We have a Mark V diving suit here. And yes, there is a face in there. <laughs> and that belonged to Walter Sharon from Rochester, New York. And this was his diving suit. We also have an exhibit dedicated to the Vietnam War. I'd like to get in here over the next couple of years and tell the story a little differently. But for now, there's two things I would like to highlight. If you can see right there is a POW uniform from, a, from an American soldier that was a POW in Vietnam. We're very proud to have that and to be able to tell the stories of the ordeals that American POWs uh, went through. Here's Joseph Reichlin, who was killed in Vietnam. He was a local Buffalo boy, and this was his jacket. He was a, he was a Huey pilot. We also had, unfortunately, a nurse that was killed in Vietnam. And I definitely want to highlight Bob Kelzu. So Bob Kelzu played for the Oklahoma Sooners. And he was drafted by the Buffalo Bills and played in 1968, the whole season, as a starting guard. To fulfill his ROTC obligations, he was sent to Vietnam and he was killed. All right, he was at base ripcord. I know the light might be too bright. And he was killed during that battle. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He was one of two NFL players who were killed in Vietnam to go along with one NFL player who was killed during World War II. And Bob Kelzu was the last football player killed in action until Pat Tillman in 2004. 
Thankfully, the Buffalo Bills did right and put him on the Bills' Wall of Fame. And rightly so. Here was second division birthing. All right, these were the coffin lockers that you might hear so much about. Triple bunk. So second division on board here on the USS Little Rock. We're bosun mates. There's their emblem on, kind of grafted onto the decking. And as you can see, this is pretty deep and it slept about 80 sailors from 2nd Division. Now this is an area that I highlight in my 1945 to 2021 comparison video with USS Little Rock. And as you can see, it, it's pretty much, I would say, the whole, uh, a good portion of the width of the ship or the beam again we're heading aft use the midship male head Here's a part that's off the tour route where Bill, who you just met, spends a lot of his time. Again, I highlight this area in our, the, our other video. There was the ship's store. They had like a soda jerk. Here's a hatch, we won't go through it tonight, but you've seen again in that video, I do go behind this hatch to cover the crew barber shop and other areas. Now behind this hatch here leads to one of the engine rooms here on board USS Little Rock. It could be wrong, it could be the fire room, but I believe that it is one of the engine rooms. It is E Division by the way, <laughs> so E Division were boiler techs. Machinist mates. These are interesting little gadgets. These strainers. All right, so when they were using the fire hose and they were pumping directly from the sea, You'd certainly get marine life larger than a few inches long. And this strainer would be able to pump out any clogs from marine life.
Now we're heading into the Harold Ellison room. This was another Buffalo boy, born and bred, and served in Squadron 8 during the Battle of Midway. All right, he was on the USS Hornet. Here's a photograph of him. And he was part of the doomed and ill-fated squadron, torpedo squadron, that took off from the Hornet to try to attack the Imperial Japanese Navy right during the Battle of Midway. And his whole squadron was shot down and all of them were killed except for this gentleman right here who made the cover of Life magazine. But here is the Torpedo Squadron. And all of these poor guys perished on June 6th, 1942. Harold Ellison, right in the corner, right there, was among them. And he had a ship named after him. And here it is here, a heavy destroyer. So this room is dedicated to Harold Ellison. Now we're heading down to an area that's usually open, but not this year. And I'd like to highlight two stories here. One is the 65th Infantry Regiment, the Boring Kinneers. Right, this regiment was made up of mostly Puerto Ricans, and they are credited with having the last battalion-sized bayonet attack in the Korean War. As you can see here, this is a Congressional Gold Medal. that was awarded to the 65th Infantry Regiment for their heroics in action in the Korean War. Now we must remember that most of them while in service uh, were still segregated and most of them have not seen snow. But they put on the last battalion sized bayonet charge during the Korean conflict. We now have a National Burr and Kinnear Day, April 13th, and they won the Congressional Gold Medal in 2016. We also have a picture of Ensign Jesse Brown. He was the first African American to become a naval aviator and he was shot down during the Korean conflict and mortally wounded when his plane crashed into the Korean mountains. We have a, this isn't his uniform but it's a replica uniform. And he was also the first African American to win the Navy Wings of Gold as well. Lieutenant Junior Grade Thomas Hudner for his actions trying to protect Jesse Brown won the 
Medal of Honor. And here's a picture of Thomas Hudner and his Medal of Honor citation. So as you can imagine, most of our exhibits here on board the USS Little Rock were completed many years ago. And it's now my job to redesign these exhibits. They've worked well for many years, but it's time to redesign them. This Korean exhibit was from 1990. So we're talking uh, about 31 years ago. The most important board in here to me is the photo board. So when people would come and visit the Buffalo Naval Park, they would donate these photographs of people from Buffalo and Western New York that served during the Korean conflict. Okay, we're going to head back up and keep on going. Here's the galley for the enlisted crew. Right here is the hot food containers. We have the ovens. The large can opener right there. Mixers for mixing bread. Biscuits, soup, griddles, these are fryers right here. And then here's one of the two chow lines. More griddles. They had a lot of hot dogs and a lot of cheeseburgers. Here's an example of their menu from 31 May 76 through 6 June 76. It might be too bright for you to see that. There we go. Hamburgers and cheeseburgers, hot dogs, oven baked beans, french fried potatoes. Oh, again, grilled hot dogs and hamburgers and cheeseburgers. <gasps> hot dogs, hamburgers, and cheeseburgers. Chili dogs on Friday with fried fish. And the relish tray means lettuce, leaves, sliced tomatoes, sliced onions, chopped onions, assorted salad dressings, mustards, 
ketchups, pickles, and pickle relishes. And here we are in the cruise mess. All right, meals were three times a day, along with mid rats for those working the night shift. Don't worry, everybody, that Pepsi machine does not work. But the funny thing is, we have really no way of hauling it off board. We'd have to take it apart. Because it's too big and too heavy. Please follow us on social media. Again, might be too bright. Here was the scullery for the CPO mess. Now this was a compartment that we opened this year. And this is the USS Little Rock's sister ship compartment. So USS Little Rock is the last Cleveland class cruiser in the world. And also the last of the Galveston class or the Providence class cruisers. So here's a picture down here of the USS Topeka and then what is that one? CGL3 which is the USS Galveston. So we have artifacts from the USS Oki City, the Oklahoma City, and also the USS Providence. The space, which we love to call Area 51, was originally a Marine station, right? So there was a Marine detail here. Here was his station. And this ladder led up to the Missile House. So you had to get clearance to go into the wing and fin. That's what's up there. The wing and fin room for the Talos missile system. And just like with Admiral's quarters and Admiral's passageway, there'd be a marine detail there requiring ID and they would be armed. Here's our cruiser compartment. All right, so this was the CPO mess. One of our staff, Stephen, here is doing some work. And this will be another long term project. I would like to highlight right here the convoy of the cripples. All right, this was Cryptiv 1. And I'm sorry, it's through plexiglass. But this is the original painting by a gentleman named Raymond Massey. And it shows Cryptiv 1, Crippled Division 1, which the USS Sullivan's was a part of. So that was when the Houston, USS Houston cruiser, and USS Canberra 
were disabled by torpedoes and they were going back to Ulithi, I believe. And they were being tugged. There's a tugboat right there in this beautiful painting. And one of the jobs of the USS Sullivan's was to protect the division. And here's the USS Sullivan's firing on a Japanese Zero. Although as you see here with the plume, the USS Houston had been hit a second time. But she survived and stayed above water. Well, <laughs> that's it for now. I keep running out of battery. But I hope you enjoyed this tour of Broadway in the Dark, along with some artifacts, and hopefully, oh, is there anyone standing behind me? No, good. All right, if you like this video, please subscribe, and uh, please uh, ring the bell, and uh, check out other, our other YouTube videos and our other social media. Thanks a lot.